Hi there, my name is Will and I'm a developer advocate at Kestra. I'm gonna walk you through how you can use JavaScript inside of Kestra to build powerful workflows. Now, the simplest way of writing JavaScript is directly inside of your flow in YAML um, by using the script plugin. This is really powerful if you wanna be able to write your JavaScript code without having to create a separate file, but giving you the full power of JavaScript. So here, as you can see, once we get to the script property, I'm able to write JavaScript just like I would anywhere else. And this is going to actually, this part of the JavaScript is going to make an API request to Docker Hub, get the number of image downloads we've had on the Kestra image, and then output that to the logs. So if I click execute, we'll be able to see that output as we would expect. So here we go, and there we get the value. You can also put your JavaScript code in a separate JS file and then come execute that using a command. So maybe if you've got more complex code with multiple files, you might wanna go down that route. And so again, with the exact same code that we just used in the script. We've got that inside of the docker image downloads.js file and we can, ins you know, just in run our code here. A little bit easier because then you haven't got to write it directly in YAML, especially if you've got larger code bases, but it gives you that flexibility of being able to control your JavaScript code. And again, we see that desired output as we would expect. But Let's say we wanna take that output and bring it back into Kestra so we can use it there. We've got this wonderful outputs tab that makes it much easier for being able to view what's going on, but also you might wanna hand that data downstream to later tasks to be able to process it. So let's have a look at what that might look like. So using the Kestra library, we can actually, and we can install that from NPM as so, we can actually hand this data back as an object to Kestra. So here we've got very simply out a pool count and we're giving it the result uh, which has a value called pool count. So we'll be able to see pool count directly inside of Kestra when we execute this code. And as a result, we can then access that value and use it in our next task, which is a log, to be able to output it to the logs a little bit cleaner than using directly from the JavaScript logs. So let's execute that and have a look to see what we get. And so the JavaScript code runs as expected. We can see that it generates that output. And again, I can see that the output is generated and we can use that in our next task. I can also see it here in the outputs tab, which makes it really easy for being able to work with your code and integrate it directly into Kestra. We can also output to files and then view those inside of Kestra as well. So I've got my, instead of outputting it using the Kestra library, I'm going to write it using FS and I'm going to just make it write a TXT file called downloads.txt and just put a st one singular string in it. So if I execute this, we'll be able to view this file or hand it downstream to a later task as well if we just you know want to do that as well. So here I can view our downloads.txt file and I can see it's got the correct number of downloads as we would expect. And all I've got to do is just specify this property output files just so it knows what file we are going to be generating. And this just writes it to the internal storage of Kestra. So this is really powerful and works with any file type that you'd like. We can also take this one step further and actually go and generate metrics. So if I go back to our execution, you'll see that there's a metrics tab here, which is really useful if you wanna be able to time how long certain tasks are taking or maybe count certain things. Um, but maybe you wanna go one step further and time how long certain functions are running inside of your JavaScript code. And so that's where the Kestra library can come in handy again. So if we head over to this example here, you can see that I wanna time how long it took to actually collect those downloads from Docker Hub and then send it back to Kestra. So I can time my function by using the date class and getting the current time and then I run my function and then I can get another time and then I can use this as a drag the two from each other to get our final value. And so here you can see I've got duration, end minus start, and then I'm dividing by a thousand to get it back into uh, seconds. Uh, and then once I've done that, I'm able to uh, hand that to Kestra.timer. So if I execute this code, we'll see that output turn up in the metrics tab, just making it a little bit easier to manage and it means you haven't got to dig through the logs to find all of this information. So as you can see here, we can see that it took 0.02 seconds to execute um, that specific function in the JavaScript code. So that's just one example of where you could use it, but it gives you lots of flexibility to be able to manage the performance of your code. 
Hopefully that gives you a good overview on how to use JavaScript directly inside of Kestra. We'd love to hear your feedback. So if you have any comments or thoughts, let us know in the comments or join our Slack community where you can share them there as well. Anyway, that is all from me, folks. I hopefully I'll see you in the next guide.